Hi guys, and welcome to this overview of BreadFX animated subtitles for Final Cut Pro. These are optimally designed to be used with Intelligent Assistance's Caption Animator. Caption Animator allows you to take the timing and transcription data of Apple's built-in captions and apply it to a title or titles of your choosing and populates the timeline with the synchronized transcribed titles. BreadFX animated subtitles are designed to take advantage of this and aim to emulate the text animation and look of TikTok and YouTube Shorts videos where the animated subtitle follows the narrative or the audio of what you're hearing. But in the end, they are at the mercy of Apple's transcription and timing. All that said, we'll just run through the process, uh, the good and the bad. So I have a little uh, snippet of the teaser video here loaded up in the timeline. So the first step, you're going to want to select all of your narrative clips or your clips with the uh, audio that you want to be transcribed. Okay. And right click or control click and choose transcribe to captions. This is all still just Apple's built-in functionality and it's really quick. Okay, so the captions are up here at the top, the resulting captions, and you can see the captions at the uh, bottom of the screen, just the default Apple look there. And it's at this point that you probably want to check and adjust the timing and the transcription of the captions that Apple has created. Uh, they're pretty good, but I can tell right away this says Final Lap Pro 11, okay? So let's just play a little bit and see what it says. With the release of Final Cut Pro 11, Apple introduced automatically transcribed captions. And they're really cool. And they're super accurate. Ah, I see another, this little gap right here. Um, for some reason, there's just a gap here. Um, I, and, and there was still audio going on. So I can see this needs to be extended to here. And this started at the right spot. And let's fix that spelling of Final Cut Pro 11. That's embarrassing. So I'll just select that caption and over here in the uh, inspector, change that to final cut. All right, so, um, and I think I see another gap down here at the end. We can check that animated still. Yeah, still is part of this title. So this should be, you know, we get a few of these weird little gaps once in a while, but you want to make any adjustments probably before you send it to caption animator. So this brings us over to step two, which is to choose a subtitle and customize it. And so with uh, BreadFX animated subtitles installed, you should see them over here in the titles browser. And if you need to twirl open this uh, little triangle right here under titles, go ahead and do that. But you should find it listed under BreadFX animated subtitles. And to the right, you'll see 25 presets split up amongst four styles or categories the first one being build the build style you know brings each word on either individually or sometimes with a scale effect or maybe a slide effect you can animate by character or line if you want to but they build on so with the fill style you're going to see the whole title at once but it's going to fill in with a, a you know a different color and all of these uh subtitles have a shape Option background, as you see right here, you've got kind of a rectangular shape. You can also have an underline and a circle shape. But in the follow category, the shape follows the word or the character or the line, as you can see in these uh, presets. And in the fourth category, the shape remains fixed, but each word or character or line highlights as you go along. Yeah, one of the highlights here is the uh, pop style, which is kind of neat, and there's a wave style. And okay, so for this demonstration, let's use the fairly simple standard highlight title. I'm going to drag it here to this uh, vertical timeline, the 916 timeline. And as you can see, it's kind of like up in the center here, and this box represents the uh, margins. These are primarily designed to be used in vertical videos. So you've got space at the bottom here for the ads that are gonna show up and there's space on the right for the user interface options. You can, of course, um, move this around any position you like. 
and change the margins. And in the text inspector, you could center it. But you're probably going to want to make it your own and change the font and the colors and everything. So let's switch over and drop it into a 16 by 9 timeline to demonstrate the customization process. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the browser here and pull up the same video in 16 by 9. Let's go back to our titles browser and I'm going to grab that same uh, highlight. And I'm going to go ahead over here in the index under the uh, roles. I'm going to turn off captions right here, just so they're not kind of cluttering up the screen. Okay. As you can see, they still come in up here in the center, like in a vertical. So you'll want to first position these where you want. And even if you're okay with the center position, go ahead and make an adjustment because there's a weird XML bug in Final Cut Pro that doesn't lock in the wider margins until you make some sort of a position adjustment. So let's look at our options over in the um, title inspector. If your inspector is not open, go ahead and press command four to open the inspector and make sure you have this little T selected here. In the first section here, text, we can change the font, size, color, and highlight color. Let's go ahead and change this to something a little beefier maybe here. Like how about this... Uh, Remetto one. I'm not sure what that is. And you can change the size. Maybe that's a little bit big, right? We'll make it smaller here. And so we can change the text color. Maybe we'll make that um, kind of a light blue. And the highlight color, we can leave that as yellow. And this is where you control whether it's going to highlight the word or a character at a time or even the line or everything at once. Usually Word, 90% of the time, is probably what you're going to be looking for. So this um, speed control might be a little bit confusing, but it can be helpful. This doesn't change the length of a title, but it changes instead how fast it cycles through the animation, leaving a hold of the title at the end without any animation. So if you put it at zero, each word is going to have the same amount of time split up amongst the full length of the uh, title here. The default of 20, I'm just going to reset it there. 20 seems to be pretty good because it leaves just a little bit at the end for you to kind of read it and absorb it. And of course, next here, we can adjust the outline color. Let's say we can make it white, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to set it to white, but we don't see it yet because the outline width is set to zero. So let's uh, beef that up a little bit. Um, by default, it has some softness, but we can take the softness off. And that gives us a little bit more of an eclectic kind of rounded outline sort of a look. Make it a little narrower. Down here in the next section, the background, we can stylize this sort of background box that you've got right here. Now, there's a couple different styles we can choose. You can have none, of course, just turn it off. Or you can choose a box outline or a circle, or kind of a circle outline. I guess it's more of an oval. Um, and the last choice is underline. Let's put it back on box. And the next thing you can do is adjust the opacity. Let's make it fully opaque here. And you can change the roundness. And it's pretty tight to the text here. So let's go ahead and change the height and the width. And maybe we make it even rounder. And next, we have this outline width slider. If you had chosen an outline shape like box outline, this slider would control the width of that outline right here. We'll reset that, and we will put this back on box. And just for fun, if you want to, you can change sort of the slant of your background. I'm just going to leave it at zero. And the offset section here, this allows you to kind of change the position if you want it to be a little higher you know, or left or right. I'm going to go ahead and reset it back to just kind of centered. Let's go ahead and make that box. Let's just reset it back to the 70% opacity. And you know what? Let's go ahead and change the highlight to red. There you go. If we don't like the alignment, we can jump over here to the text inspector. And make sure we have it selected in the timeline, right? Um, we can change the alignment to centered. 
Okay, we are now ready to send this timeline to Caption Animator. If you have Caption Animator already installed, you're going to find it up here under the uh, Workflow Extensions. Click on it and choose Caption Animator, which brings up the Caption Animator window. First, we want to go back to our browser and find our project timeline and drag it to Caption Animator. Within Caption Animator, you want to make sure the right subtitle is selected. We only have one in our timeline. And I'm going to suggest that you set the characters per title probably to something along the lines of yeah, 15 to 25. We can set it to, say, you know, 20. That's going to limit the number of characters and therefore words per subtitle. Okay, and the other thing I like to choose is secondary storyline. This way, they kind of go into their own storyline as if they're their own role. So let's choose secondary storyline, and then we press go. And then it's going to ask you which library you want to import your animated subtitles to. I'm going to choose animated subtitles, of course, and click choose. Give it a few seconds to import the XML. And then we can close the uh, caption animator window. And so after processing, it has created a new event in your library, this one, uh, 7925, and placed our project with the new animated subtitles right inside. So let's open it up and uh, check out the results. I'm going to turn off the captions and let's just rewind it back here to the start. And just play a little bit back. With the release of Final Cut Pro 11, Apple introduced automatically transcribed captions. Okay, so right away there, I saw it was just a little bit off there. So you could just simply take your trim tool and make some adjustments here in the timeline. And grab another little bit. Into animated titles. So unfortunately, the CapCut advantage in this area held pretty strong. Until the guys over at Intelligent Assistance released Caption Animator. So that wasn't too bad. I could see the timing be a little bit better in there, but um, I think overall it doesn't look too bad. From here, you can select this secondary and copy and paste it into your original timeline. Let's go back to the projects. This is my original project. I guess you could leave this in here, maybe disable it if you want to. But you want to put the uh, playhead at the very beginning of the timeline and press Command V to paste it all in there. And so there you go. Only a few things can be changed in mass after the fact. If you select all the titles and go over here to the text inspector, you can change things like font and change it maybe to something more fun like uh, Action Man. Um, we can change the size. And we can change the vertical alignment, but the left and right alignment, as you can see, don't seem to work. Um, line spacing and tracking seems to uh, hold across all the titles. So let's take a look and see if these titles all change. Yes, they did. Another thing you might want to change is the position after the fact. So you can't just drag the text up here. It's only going to change that one title. But you can kind of cheat and select them all. And using Final Cut's transform controls, you can go over to the position. Now you can't do it in the viewer, but if you click and drag, say the Y position, if you do that, it's changing the position of all of these at once. That's just a neat trick to know in Final Cut Pro. And so that's it. I really hope you find these useful. Thanks for watching. Happy editing.